It's Valentine's Day, which means it's my birthday and another year that I could say that I'm 36 and single. Let's talk about a card waifu. Today, we're talking arcade. You know, the kaiju scientist, Akane Shinjo wannabe that I've been trying to hype up for the last few months? My set came in, and I've been testing her at my three locals for the last weekend with pretty good success, so... Let's go over the deck, and how last week's dates went. Of course, if you guys like the style of video, you guys know what to do. Now, Arcade's ride line should look very familiar. Like, if you take the glitter text off Ava, then the 0 through 2 are the exact same thing. Except my wife loves me. Her research works a little bit different than her friends, though. This Monster Lab is just that. On place, you get to check your top 5 for up to 2 cards with Monster in their name, add one to their hand, and the other one goes right to drop zone. Consistency is consistency. But there's a few cute things you can do with it, like add the Persona Ride and the Perfect Garden to your hand in addition to your other troops, since the Trial Deck Sentinel does have Monster in its name. Dropping the Kaijus off at the pool isn't too bad of an idea either, since the second row effect of Lab lets you take those cards from your drop zone and throw them right into your research order for later. So effectively blindly dropping monsters for like Ryline or Guardian and all that stuff, it's a plus, because they're just going to end up in space anyways. Once they're in the lab, that's when Arkite really shines. Like her great three flavor text suggests, she will make the perfect, and she does that by combining two different skills with everything that she's been sizing up in that lab. First off, whenever a monster is placed on a rear guard circle, if you have a copy of that card in the order zone, you can shove it back in the bottom of your deck, give him plus 10, leading Arkite go all Rita Repulsa and make her monsters grow. Not to mention that, on attack, her other effect can send up to one monster on the field into the order zone. Then check your top 7 for another monster to call, which effectively turns this into a 4 attack deck that consistently cycles and makes pretty decent numbers. Now let's start talking about those monsters. Starting from the top, we got Godzilla over here, who's our basic retirement tool. When you put him down, you can cat blast one and retire something equal to or lower than the number of your research cards. So he's a good spot removal. In addition to that, he gets a plus 5 whenever you have 3 more research, which makes him a big swing. Theoretically, he's going to be a 28k beater for literally no reason. That could kill self because he's Godzilla. This promo, um, I don't know how I feel about him, but I feel like I should mention it just because it gets a minus 2 to your opponent when it is attacked or when it attacks. So if that matters for any reason, there you go. Then we get a step on new card. This is going to be a cycle draw. So when he hits, you're able to draw a card and put one into soul. This will help out if you are having some soul issues and like a card that you'll see in a second, you do like to cycle draw a lot. Speaking of that card, you guys, this is literally a drop and draw. This is literally one of those cards that says, when place you draw a card, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Why is this good? First of all, it's a monster, so you can cheat with it and you're always gonna have a 20k. Uh, cute things you can do during battle phase to activate some combos. You can do this to set up your drop zone to put cards into the order zone. And it's just free filtering draw power with no setback thanks to the fact that your anything you drop zone turns into a plus that you're on. This is the second way that you can put cards in your order zone other than just the order itself. When placed, you can choose a monster from your drop, shove it right up in the order zone. And second skill, he's going to get a plus 5 shield, making him a 10k guardian. Decent, I'm not running maximum right now, but he is a good option. Solemn tech. Honestly, I'm not playing it at all, but there's your early game rush, I guess. So one of the cool things about Arcade is it turns some a bunch of staples that we already had into cards that matter. Here's the point. You guys remember this penguin? That adds consistency. You will get two orders off your ride line, but you want a third, so this gives you your third potentially. Or if you have more research orders or other set orders, he gives you the ability to search them. Funny goblin. This card is so cute when you set him up. You essentially say, here's an 18k beater, because I sent him one back to deck. By the way, bottom deck card, it can be literally anything. And if you do want to draw off it, bottom deck a grade 3, like a Persona Rider, a copy of Godzilla or something. Oh. Do I need to explain Bulb Mind to you? Do I need to talk about Bulbasaur and why it needs to get reprinted? It has Monster in its name. If you can't afford Bulb Mind, there are two other counter chargers that do have Monster in their name. 
this guy if he boosts attack that hits, and this guy if you feel like discarding in order. Finally, a few more grade ones. We got this dude that's also somewhat recent. When another rear guard is retired, you're able to bind him or turn that retired card back to your hands. Mid until we find a control based meta. If we do have a control based meta, this will be a great card to run. So you might want to hold on to some of these. Other draw power Godzilla, funny looking card. Just look at this art, it's amazing. Just like Godzilla, he gets a plus five if you get three more researches. And like I said, he is going to be a Soul Blast 2 draw card. Basically, luck board and steroids. Oh, and like I said briefly in the little intro thing, your perfect card, your Trotic perfect card, he's got that nice little monster in his name. You will have to discard for it. You can't cheat out like the good perfect cards, and that means that you're not running elemental psychitude or whatever, but he sure is a tutorable perfect card that you can cycle back to deck. I've had matches where I was able to use perfect cards a good five, six times in the game because I had one in the order zone and just kept on calling and putting him back in, searching top five. There's a handful of other monsters too, but I think these are the ones that you need to keep in mind. On to the matchups. This is what my initial build looked like. I took it to Illuminati for the first run, aka the one shop cool enough to let Coney hang out. By the way, shout out to all the locals. If you guys are ever in the Cincinnati area, make sure to check them all out. So first round that day was against Thagria, which was a pretty back and forth grindy match. If you think about it, we're both basically running four attack decks that can super consistently do a gimmick. It just happens that mine makes bigger numbers and is ultimately able to take out all the percent rides. Round two was against Prison, which honestly didn't go as well as I thought it would. Going into this, I figured if they imprison something, oh well, just spend a resource to get it back. All that Arkwright really ever needs a counter blast for is her once per turn effect. And you do want a little soul so you could use draw power effects, but it's literally just that, it's just for draw power. So theoretically, I thought I'd be absolutely fine against that deck. Not so much, it turns out, prison's good for a reason. Then final round that night was against Luke, which I technically won. Uh, Technically, because we were starting that round at like 11 o'clock at night and everyone wanted to go home, so they were just giving each other wins. But we're gonna pretend like that didn't happen and I actually beat Lukie. After a couple of tweaks, I on Sunday I took Arcade out up to Epic Loot up in Centerville. I have to trap my one copy of the Grade 2 order for Ava and switch around a couple of different monsters. My one was actually a science fight because we, I was going against Ava. And that was a draw. We had a game two in times, and unfortunately the store rules there were an auto draw for that, so... Chances are though I would have ended up winning that match if we went to game three, just because throughout game two I was really starting to wear out my opponent, and they were probably going to start slowly misplaying and stuff, so... I'm counting that one as a win. It's a pretty even grindy matchup between their ability to get dads every turn and my ability to just make big numbers and ignore the dice completely because I don't care if you retire my stuff. But it was a pretty good matchup. Second round that day was, oh god, that was interesting. Um, my opponent actually had Fabrineal, the Japanese Dark State card that counts grazing your soul to reset stuff or, and retire yourself and stuff. We decided at that local to let him play it. There you go. I have part of Future Deck, whatever. Who knows when it's gonna come to English. <laughs> But uh, the Fabric Field matchup was interesting. I did end up crushing that because he was committing a lot to board in order to make his soul. I don't know if you have a more efficient way of doing that or not, but I was just I'm just rush. Once again, if you kill my cards, that's fine. I just send them back into space and send them back to deck to cycle later. Fabernil, not really an issue, just had to watch out for his reset. Then the final match of that day was our local Nirvana player who was playing Jeb Nirvana. Nirvana. Those guys that know know. Unfortunately, not the best deck to play because of how easy it is to remove some of those boys and what removing a Nirvana does, but it, it gets my respect. You guys know that I love Nirvana and Vibrina and all their forums, so. But we did end up winning that in, ultimately going 2 0 1, whatever the draw counts as. It was basically if the draw didn't exist, we won that tournament. 
For our final date before the world's most awkward birthday, it was back to the OG stomping grounds at Monster. Now, I was pretty confident with the build that I brought on Sunday to Center Bills, so I didn't really think of changing it. But I'm a bit nervous since the crowd here is super competitive, so if anything's going to test our research and our luck, it's going to be this locals. Yeah, that wasn't a test. That was an absolute slaughter. I legitimately don't know what I can say about my matchups at Monster. It was a case of everything that could go wrong went wrong. Constantly drawn triggers versus Hex Orb, where I wasn't able to mount an attack and just kind of stalled out. A Roro matchup was okay. I think I had just enough removal to get rid of the Red Alinas, but it still stalled out and went to time where I ended up losing game three. And first matchup was against Nightmare Dolls, which is a good deck. Broken Toys is a good card. There's no minusing that deck. You just rush from turn one and make giant numbers and have five attacks with giant numbers. And that was that was a match, but like I, I knew I was gonna lose that one. Um, O three at Monster ended the third date. If you could call it that, it was a curse. It was after two days of flawless play, every single thing that could go wrong going wrong. That's all I could describe that tournament as. So, that is the first weekend with my girl. Was the ending completely perfect? Not really, but in general I think it was pretty well, and it will be a lot of success that we have with some more experimentation. As always, if you guys enjoy this kind of video, make sure to leave a nice little like or comment down below. If you want to give me a birthday present, maybe tell your friends to subscribe, because we are so close to getting triple digits, and I would love to finally get there. Or maybe purchase some raised energy using code SKYRIDGE to save 15% off on an awesome energy drink. Catch you guys soon with some videos about Gear Chronicle and the big tournament happening in Orlando. And until next time, always embrace the infinite.